Hey man, this um fellowship will be recorded to the cloud and we are live on Facebook on tonight. It is Friday night live. We're talking tonight about being overcharged and overindulged on tonight. Okay, and I am going to get us started. Let's see. Y'all give me a second. Overcharged and overindulgence. All right. Overcharged and overindulgence. Some of our uh, root scriptures were Luke 21 and 34. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. Um, Matthew 13 and 22. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Revelations 3 and 21. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Uh, some scriptures that came to me were, ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and have been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have been overcharging or overindulging in the things of this world. Also Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Colossians 3. Where did that first scripture you gave come from? First scripture, Luke 21 and 34. On the other one. James 5 and 5. Ye have lived yeah. in pleasure yeah. on the earth and been wanton. That's James 5 and 5. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. <laughs> Romans 12 and 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Colossians 3 and 2, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Amen. Not on things, um, set your affections on things above and not on things on the earth, right? So in, in Luke, Jesus is speaking to his disciples about the signs of the end times. And he's describing a series of events that will precede his second coming. And that included wars and earthquakes, plagues. And he, he warns them to guard and to guard their hearts and not be led astray by false prophets or overcome by the anxieties, the worries, the lust and the cares of this life. He began to tell them all these things. These were warnings. Uh, there are several different layers here, right? All which have relevance to the lives of believers at its core. This verse, uh, Luke, the one we read, serves as a caution to believers not to be consumed by worldliness and temptations of the flesh, but to remain vigilant spiritually, prepared for the return of Christ. Take heed. Be watchful and are guard against the things that can distract you. In a broader sense, these distractions represent many ways that people can be led astray from their commitment to follow Christ. We can lose sight of what the goal is. We can lose sight of the whole reason that we live this life and why we're doing the things that we do. 1 Corinthians 10 and 23, all things are lawful for me. But all things are not expedient. Come on, all things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. I might not grow from it. Come on, it might be lawful. It might not be a sin for me to do it, but am I growing for, from it? Mm -hmm. Is it edifying anybody else? Is anybody growing from it, right? We're coming into the true liberty of Jesus Christ. 
we need to always remind ourselves when you begin to see, I do have liberty in Christ. I am free in Christ. You need to remind yourself of Galatians 5 and 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh. It's not about you. But by love, serve one another. It shouldn't be used for personal gain. That's not what your liberty in Christ is for. Self-gratification. But to gain others to Christ. Walking in complete freedom in Christ takes self-control. Mm -hmm. And that's why some would rather stay in bondage. Oh, come on. They need the law to keep them in check. They need a taskmaster. Like the children of Israel, we need a king. Give us a king. Come on. We have a king. Y'all, we got one. He's king of kings and lord of lords. Why do you need someone lording over you, telling you what you should and shouldn't do? Yeah, we can teach you. We can tell you what the word of God says, but the choice is yours. Oh, you have to make the decision for yourself. We can't go around taking the choice from people. Christ gave us a choice. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. We're talking about being overcharged and overindulging because we do have liberty. The word has been written on our hearts and you have a choice to follow it. You, it requires you to keep you in check. And that's just too much responsibility for some. Self-control, self-discipline. Complete surrender is, ne is a necessity to walk in freedom. You got to be surrendered to Christ. Ooh, not to the flesh. You got to be surrendered to Christ that you will make the right decision, that you will make the right choice, that you will realize when you're doing a little too much of something and be able to pull yourself back. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. Doing something to an excessive degree, overcharged. You can no longer hear the voice of God. You're no longer allowing the Holy Spirit to lead. Too much stuff, too much pointless information that just makes debates. Ain't got no value. It's meaningless. Task of frivolous entertainment can all cause our heart to be overcharged. Too much of anything, too much of Facebook. Too much of TikTok, too much religion, too much Instagram, just scrolling, reading drama. You begin to start judging people. You start scrolling on Facebook too much and seeing too much. You begin to have thoughts in your mind, filling your heart with discord and bitterness, watching the lives of other people that look like they're doing better than you. Oh, come on. Too much of it. Now you feel some type of way posting a life you know you're not living just to keep up. Too much of anything is not good for us. Not to say that these things are wrong in themselves, but balance is key. Not to overcharge and overindulge. You have to know when you've had enough. It's so easy to lose track of the goal when you get caught up in the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. We think it's just entertainment, but Satan is crafty. Mm -hmm. Now, the serpent was more crafty, subtle, skilled in deceit. Oh, come on. Than any living creature of the field which the Lord God had made. And this is who you're playing with when you start you start playing around a little too much. He's going to trick you every time. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. And he still is crafty. There's an agenda. Don't get it twisted. As Pastor Moore tells us all the time, if you can't stop your short, he'll push you past. You realize I do have freedom in Christ. There's liberty in the Lord. And now you're doing too much. Oh, come on. We'll go from living this religious lifestyle where you can't do nothing. You, you can't have conversations with people. You can't go to the movies. You can't watch TV. And, and then the enemy will push you past. You realize, you know what? I can go to the movie. It's me choosing the movie that I choose to go to. It's, it's me choosing what type of music I'm going to listen to. You go from that to doing too much of everything, right? Now you started out listening to a love song. Now you in your feelings because you're single. Mm -hmm. Oh, come 
all. That's why I, I and I can speak for Sister April. I, I can listen to some R&B music if that's what I chose to listen to. But why would I do that when I know that I'm single? And then I'm going to be over here sad. Well, Lord, when are you going to send me a husband or the enemy start putting sexual thoughts in your mind? You got you are in control of what you put into your spirit. That is the issue. You don't want to overcharge and overindulge in anything. If he can't stop you short, he'll push you past. Yes, you have freedom. Satan says, so leave it up. No, no, no. The preaching and the teaching, the gospel of Jesus Christ is still the goal. The saving of souls is still the goal. The freedom is not for you to be out here living how you want to live. It's that you may draw others to Christ. Right? Paul said, I became all things to all men that I may gain some. I want to win some. That don't mean I'm out here sinning. That means I can have a regular conversation with somebody. I don't have to be holier than thou, right? But don't overindulge. Don't overcharge. Not just living your best life. Not just running, running it up. I got, I'm running up a bag. Come on, we're not just getting to the bag. Not just having fun, but doing good unto others. If you are a believer, get in the bag and being a blessing to others, by all means, get the bag. But don't let the bag overtake you. Don't get so caught up in making money that you forgot what the goal is. Even if I'm making all this money, the goal is to be a blessing to someone else. Not stack my bank account. Oh, come on, unless I'm stacking it to give. Not stacking it to hold for myself. That is the goal. So don't, don't be so leaned into making money and stacking money that you close your fist to those in need. You have to be willing to part with it. Whatever it is, you got to be willing to part with it. We're talking about overcharging and overindulgence. And, and I'm going to keep it simple. Let's talk about, we just did, music. You choose what you're listening to. I choose not to listen to all that cursing and shooting it up, calling females out their name, talking under people's clothes. I choose not to listen to that. Clapping back about sleeping with people, husbands and wives. I choose not to listen to music like that. No, this song, they might, might not be cursing. But all they talk about is the struggle and being down and being depressed. I choose not to listen to that. It's a choice, right? Where is the, if for, for a single person, don't be overcharged in that, right? Don't get overcharged in it. Now you're over here remembering what it was. It's certain songs you can listen to that's absolutely nothing wrong with, but guess what happened? It take you back in your mind to a place. It'll take you back in your mind to a person, to a particular situation. So you have to be careful of the things that you are putting back or allowing into your spirit, right? So the movie, same thing. You have to take heed to what it is that you're putting in to your spirit. Um, My stepdad used to watch a lot of fighting movies, you know, a lot of killing and all of these type of movies, right? It's a movie. You watching it, but the next thing you know, you screaming and hollering at the TV. Oh, kill him. Kill him. <laughs> Come on. This, this is what's coming out of you now, right? We have to be careful. You start, I'm going to tell you a thing that would get me watching a slave movie. Now you all building in your heart and, and watching the movie, but you all building in your heart. Me and my daughter was watching a movie earlier today and, and the people was uh, started killing each other. The, the woman had put feces on the man and I saw, oh, I would have choked her out. What? These are the things that begin to come out of you because you're watching the movie. You got to be careful what you're allowing into your spirit. Yep, you said it watching a movie, but when somebody crossed you the wrong way, what's going to come out? Whatever you've been putting in. Don't be overcharged and overindulged. Oh, it's just a movie. Yeah, but what come out of you when you're watching these movies? Oh, come on. You're going to be honest. So you have to be careful. Binge watching. Uh, love movies, now you're depressed because you're by yourself. 
Binge watching scary movies. Now you got a spirit of fear that then came over you. When you were sitting in your house with the lights out. Now you scared. Knowing the Lord ain't gave you the spirit of fear. Where did it come from? Come on. These things we have to pay attention to. People watch football games and get so mad this didn't happen. When they team lost, they start fighting people, breaking their TVs. I've known, I know people in my life that have been shot and killed over a football game. Got into an argument with somebody. The man left, went to his car, came back in and shot and killed him dead. Over a football game, overcharged, overindulging in these things. But they say it's entertainment and there's nothing wrong with it. What is going on in watching a football game that will cause you to be so angry that you get a, a gun and shoot another person? Come on, they tell you it's bigger than entertainment. There's something that you're missing. This is spiritual warfare. And Satan is crafty in the things that he used. Right? You find yourself in a place I can't go to church on Sunday. I can't fellowship, can't do none of that because I'm going to the game. You overcharged. You're overindulging, right? We have to be mindful of these things. This happens drunk on the cares of this life in a state of surfeiting, a place that is lawful for you, but not edifying. And you do it in excess. You become drunk by it. Ooh, now it's overtaking you. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6 and 12, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. I will not let it lead me. I won't become a slave to any of it. Romans 8 and 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life is in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. People who drink to the point of being drunk are an easy target for crime, even in the natural. Their reaction, your reaction time is slow. Your ability to think clearly is gone. And they often do things they never would have done sober. Ask me how I know. This is the same thing that happens in the spirit. When you get over here and you get overcharged and begin to overindulge in things that you have liberty in, but it has overtaken you. Now you drunk in it. You can't hear clearly. Oh, come on. You don't know if that's the Lord that told you that or something else. Compa because of what you've been putting in your spirit, you become overcharged and your spiritual eyesight, you become blinded. Amen. You find yourself doing things that you normally would not have done. Our hearts can become drunk under the influence of many things. When our hearts are drunk, our reaction time is low. We don't respond like Christ. Come on. Our ability to think clearly is gone. We no longer have on the mind of Christ. We now do things we wouldn't have done otherwise. Our hearts become an easy target for the enemy. He's crafty and will use your liberty against you. You must have self-control and be disciplined in the spirit. Social media, cell phone, dates, friends, family, material things, jobs, television, even your church building, the conferences, appreciation services. Oh, come on. You can be overcharged in the work when you inside the building working. Well, how? You can't overcharge in doing work for the Lord. Well, ask Mary if you can. Ask Martha. If you can or if you can't, come on. They start preparing for the for the gathering. Martha was upset because Mary wasn't helping her. This is the same thing that we do in the house of God. When we finna have this big conference, we got all this food in the back. Come on to feed the people when they come. You can't even come in here and hear the word. Why? Because you too busy in the back. Oh, come on. You can't sit at the feet of Jesus because you too busy in the back making plates. Oh, y'all, come on. It's the truth anyhow. You, you ain't got to say, man, you ain't got to believe it. It's the truth anyhow. All of these things will become a distraction if you overindulge. If you can't hear the word of God because you in the kitchen preparing to go boxes, 
Martha, you missing that good thing. Luke 10 and 42 says, but one thing is needful. And Mary had chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. The work has become a distraction and you are now overcharged. Cares of this world, status, appearance, material possessions. Everywhere we look, it's a promise of better health, better living, smaller waistline, nicer homes, more, 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 excess, excess, excess. It's all frivolous and vanity. Cares of this world are temporary and Satan has designed them to consume us. You must have self-discipline and self-control. My attitude can be wonderful until I step, step on the scale. I, you know, I've been trying to lose the weight. I've been eating right. I get on that scale and ain't lost a pound. Now I'm having a bad day. That shouldn't happen. Is trying to lose weight overtaking you? That now you got a bad attitude with other people? Come on. You done missed your hair appointment. Now you got an attitude. You mad because they done canceled your hair appointment? Come on. What is overtaking you? Look, the little foxes destroy divine. It's the little things in your everyday life that are overtaking you, right? Um, Another thing, overcharge, losing sight of the word. A small thing that I see, you might have ordered something from Amazon. Come on, y'all, this everyday thing. Things don't go planned. They don't go as you planned them. You you ready to, to get your package. They delayed it. You on the line with Amazon, raising sand. Come on. Overcharge, losing sight of the word. Being patient in all things. Having patience. That's the fruit of the spirit. You on this. Yeah, I know. It's, I got I got two-day prime. My stuff supposed to be here in two days and my package not here. I'm going to need a refund. I'm going to need my money back. Your attitude. All, come on, y'all. Come on. Ooh, these are the little foxes. These are those everyday things that you don't even think about. You trying to get to a parking spot, the people in front of you driving slow. Oh, they need, if they can't drive, they need, they just need to take their license. They need to move over. Come on. These are the little things. You so overcharged and you don't even realize that these are the, y'all, come on. Come on, somebody now. All the conversation and the joking and the jesting, Ephesians 5 and 4, and I'm wrapping this thing up, says, neither filthiness or foolish talking or jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. You, you over here laughing and cracking jokes all the time. That's all you're doing ever. Next thing you know, your jokes and your jokes and got a little dirty. Oh, come on. You saying some stuff you shouldn't be saying. What you said was, it it it, it might have not have been uh, explicit, but the way that you gave it, it led the mind to it. We have to be careful of those things that we say, you know what you're alluding to. Come on. We have to be careful of those things. You start overindulging, right? Things you wouldn't even talk about, now you begin to talk about. Things you would have never said, now you begin to say. Now you begin crossing lines because you've been overindulging in this area, in your life, in these conversations. Jokes you normally wouldn't laugh at, now you laughing at them. Oh, come on. Now you telling the joke yourself. Overcharged, overindulged, foolish talk, idiotic. It's absurd. Come on. It's blatantly meaningless. Like, what's the point? Who was edified? Speaking without self-control, crude jokes, vulgar, lewd, foul mouth humor. God certainly allows for humor. I tell the Lord all the time, oh, you got a sense of, a sense of humor, huh? I remember one day telling the, the Lord that told me to uh, go to somebody and apologize. And I was like, no, nah, she did me wrong. I ain't did nothing to her. I'm not apologizing her. And I went on for a couple of days right there. And I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to apologize. Because I knew that the young lady wasn't in town. I knew she was off in the army somewhere. And uh, I felt like I wasn't going to see her. I said, okay, Lord, well, if I happen to see her, I'll apologize. Got to work one day, y'all, out of all the stores in the world that she could have walked into. The woman walked into the store where I work. And I said, okay, Lord, you got a sense of humor.
Zoom because it was funny. You literally sent her here because you in, you meant that I was going to apologize. And I didn't have, and I did what the Lord said. I didn't have a choice. Even when I began to let her walk out the door, the Lord said, this may be the last time that you see her. And I stopped her and I apologized. You, you, the Lord has a sense of humor. You can laugh and crack jokes, but they don't have to be degrading or leading to immoral or sexual thoughts. Things like that lead to sins of the mind, such as lust. And that should be avoided. No, you didn't act on it, but you already did. The act in your mind. Come on. This is exactly where Satan desires us to be because our heart is burdened, consumed, and drunk under the influence of the cares of this world. We overcharge and overindulge, not thinking clearly and doing things we normally wouldn't do with the desire to fit an image that this world says, I need to be more desirable. Come on, I got to be more appealing to get the people in my church. I got to become more like them. The people is tired of themselves. Oh, come on, y'all. I was tired of me. Coming across somebody who said they was saved, sanctified, and feeling and they was doing what I was doing. I did not want that because I wanted a new life. I wanted something different. I believe there had to be better than this. So we do not conform to this world. Oh, hallelujah. Not trying to fit in. God isn't as much concerned about your waistline or your edges. Come on. That nice lineup as he is your attitude, your heart. He's more concerned about those things. Not the frivolous things that they are concerned about in this world. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we are also, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. Come on, it might not be a sin, but it's a weight. It didn't got heavy. And the sin which do, which do it so easily beset us, it may not be a sin, but too much of it, it becomes a weight. For as a snare shall it come on them that dwell on the face of the whole, a whole earth. Luke 21 and 35, be aware of these things going on around you, lest you be tempted to fall into error. First Peter 5 and 8, be sober, be vigilant, not overcharged, not overindulgent. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Don't let our goal become preparing and living for this life. All this is temporary. It will pass away. Distracted with their life and with, and you'll miss eternal life. So distracted with this life, you miss eternal life. You miss an opportunity to witness. You miss an opportunity to compel someone to come to Christ. So consumed with the cares of this life. Don't be so consumed. With this world, you fail to see the signs of his coming. The five foolish versions. Oh, come on. You've been so busy having fun, you forgot to put oil in your lamp. You got your lamp and no oil. Your, your, your light that went out and you don't even know it. You don't even realize that the Holy Spirit has left you. Oh, come on. Overindulge and overcharge. You didn't even see when you went out the way. You didn't even realize you had turned to the broad path. Oh, come on. Spending time in God's word. Being alert and in prayer on a daily basis is the best way to keep our hearts from becoming overcharged. Always look in the mirror and check yourself. While we pursue a, pursue a healthy lifestyle, eating right or, or better, you know, trying to take care of our bodies because this is the temple of God. Let us not forget that real health begins in our heart. How healthy are you on the inside? How healthy are you spiritually? Come on. Because if you're dying spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, none of my things even matter. How healthy are you spiritually? More of Christ and less of us. No man knows the day nor the hour, but we know that Christ is soon to come. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the flow the issues of life. Out of your heart are the issues of life. That's Proverbs 4 and 23. Don't let your heart be overcharged, intoxicated 
Walk in your liberty. Do it with self-control and discipline. Always look into the care and the good of others, keeping your eyes on things above. Jeremiah 17 and 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. Don't let it be overcharged. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings, overcharged and overindulgent. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am sat down with my father in his throne. I am thankful for this lesson on, on tonight, y'all. It was an on-time word for me. I mean, right on time because I my eyes came open. Oh, I'm telling you, so much religion is falling off and I realize the liberty that I have in Christ. That's why I know this word came forth. It was for me if it wasn't for nobody else. Now that you understand your liberty, let me remind you not to be overcharged or overindulged. The Lord sends warning. He said, I won't leave you ignorant. We don't have to walk into anything unaware. You just got to be willing to hear the spirit and obey. Oh, come on. We got to be willing to hear the spirit and obey. And I thank the Lord for this lesson. I thank him for this lesson on tonight. Um, you should be well equipped and prepared. If you're allowing the Holy Spirit to lead and guide you, keep God first. Love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, come on. All the law is summed up in them too. That's what the scripture said. Choose Christ. Life is in him. Choose Christ. Freedom is in him. Choose Christ. Prioritize your spiritual well-being above all else. And I'm done on tonight. Amen. Come on in, um, Sister Janita. You ready? You got something you want to share on tonight? Bishop, you got something you want to say? Sister Janita, come come on in and share. Yeah, let's just, Sister Janita go it on. Come on, sis. I have a little bit. Um, you were stepping out on my study though, but that was wonderful confirmation. I appreciate that. Um, so Luke 21 and 34, take, these are the words of Christ. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life so, so that that day come upon you unawares. So this is Christ urging his disciples to be, um, to take heed, pay attention. Um, in 1 Corinthians 11 and 28, he says, but let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be that we should not be condemned with the world. So this, a lot of times we only hear this part of the scripture whenever it's time to take the Lord's Supper, but it tells you, he says, examine yourself. So if you surf it in and you, you drunk and this drunkenness is a sin. If you drunkenness off the cares of this world, it does not say drinking off of alcohol. So many times when you see the word drunkenness, so many people, you know, think about alcohol. He said, but anytime it let your hearts be overcharged. So it's your heart that can be uh, overcharged or your heart that can be drunken or your your heart that is concerned with the cares of this world. Um, Proverbs 4 and 23, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Um, in 1 Samuel 16 and 7, he said, but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance nor on, his, on the height of his stature, but because I have refused him. It's not what, it's not what you look like. You, you, you got red bottoms down. You you Versace down your new suit every every Sunday. It's not about what you look like. He's not looking at what you look like or the, or the the number of count of your followers or the number in your ministry or the number in your pews. And he's not looking at that. But the Lord said, not as man said. For the for the man looking on the outward appearance, you may look as holy as you want to be. What did the scripture say? But you but inward you are a, a white as the poker. But the Lord looking up on the heart. It is the heart that the Lord looks at. It's not about what you look like on the outside. Looking at the word um, overcharged. The word overcharged in Greek means to be burdened 
weighed down excessively or burdensome. In Matthew 11 and 28, these are the words of Christ as well. He says, come unto me, all ye that, that, that labor and are heavy laden. Looking at the definition of the word laden, I had to look that up. Of course, I go back to my discipleship one-on-one training. And um, the word laden means to be heavy loaded or weighted down. He said, come unto me if you weight it down. Come unto me if you if you um you just can't get it together. You just overcharge. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So the, the, the yoke of Christ is light. You don't have to be worried about what this person doing, what that person doing. You will know for yourself what your relationship is like with Christ when you come into a relationship with him. That's good. Um, so, okay, yeah. Um, I had Hebrews 12 and 1 as well. Wherefore, seeing we are come back, come past with about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside, let us lay aside every weight, every weight. If you have a person that keep coming to you dumping your dumping their trash in your lap. You need to lay that aside because all of a sudden now you feeling condemned. Now you feeling some kind of way. No, lay aside every way. You can't. You don't have to keep on letting them dump their trash in your in your um in your lap. Mm -hmm. And it says, and the sin that doth so easily beset us. What sin easily beset us? Sister April talks so beautifully about the subtility of of the enemy. What sin? The sin of disbelief. The sin of doing what you know is not right when when it, when you just you don't have the faith to do it. You just doing it because you see somebody else do it. That's sin. If you don't do it within your own understanding of faith, you're doing it in sin. He said. He said, and let us run with patience the right that is set before us. It does not matter what sister so and so, where sister so and so is in this race that we're trying to get to the kingdom. What has Christ said before me? Am I doing what He has said for me to do? In um first or uh, second Timothy two and four, it says, No man that wore it entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. It's you, you're not fighting. What does the word war mean? It means to get involved with the affairs, it means to get entangled with, to be, you know, to, to be yoked up with. You're so concerned about making sure you pay your tithes. If you're looking at your brother and sister, you're not you're not doing what you what Christ said do. Put put your brother and sister before you put yourself. He didn't say put put your money in the church offering. That's not what he said do. He not you so worried about having the best outfit on that you're not taking care of your own household. He said he's worse than an imbecile if you don't take care of your own uh, household. So we can so we can be so weighted down with the curls of the work of this world that we lose sight of the things that matter. In Galatians 5 and 1, he says, stand, there, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The yoke in, in this passage, he was talking about the law. Yes, but the yoke of bondage could be you bound to, the, to, to this ministry that, that's not going to be able to help you get into the kingdom. You don't know nothing about Christ and his commandments. But you bound and you you yoked up with this with you just overcharged with the convocations. You got a gear for this. You got a homecoming. You got you got all of this stuff going on. But when you when you call, go to close your eyes and you stand before Christ, he gonna say, "I ain't never knew you." Well, I was a member of so and so. so. He, he don't know that don't, don't, don't matter. You have to be overcharged with what nothing. He said. In um, Hebrews 4, I think it's 9, it says, There remained therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that entered into his rest, whose rest? Christ's rest. He also had ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. You don't believe what the word of God say? You believe that your preacher... It's more right than the word of God. Oh, shame on you, brother. Shame on you, sister. You're not going to make it in. Um, as I said, I have to sometimes remind myself uh, when I'm going through my day-to-day -day task or whatever, does it really matter? Does it matter about what Sister April say? Does it matter that my package didn't get here on time? No. Does it matter that they cut you off? In, in the, does it? No. 
Does it matter how much money you give to your ministry? No. Does it matter how good you overtreat your pastor? No. It don't matter. Matthew 24 and 35, it said, these are the words of Christ. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. <laughs> Excuse me. But as, but as the days of no word, so shall also the coming of the son of man be. He's talking about Noah when they had never seen rain. So now you telling me it's going to rain. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm okay, I believe you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep on doing what I'm doing. The 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 sin of unbelief has has blanketed the world so much. I have a friend and when I tell you I am so hard, my heart is so heavy by seeing the fact that she just don't believe she just does not believe that all of these things that we fight for every day, your credit score, having this, going part, it does not matter. The only thing that's going to matter when, when Christ cracks the sky is the word of God. Did you live according to the word of God? And uh, Matthew 24 and 39, he says, he knew and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall the coming of the son of man be. Then two shall be in the field. You gonna, two are gonna be at work. One will be taken, and the other one will be left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One will be taken, and the other one left. You are so overcharged with the things that's going on in this world. You steadily scrolling and forgot that your oil lamp, your lamp was not filled. You didn't have it. You thought you had it, but you had religion. And the Son of Man is gonna crack the sky, and you're gonna be left there outside the marriage of the lamb in hell fire because you were too overcharged and you were too um indulgent in the things of this world brother and sister get your life get your house in order he is soon to come and i'll relinquish the floor amen all right well we praise god for what we've heard uh-oh thank god for what we've heard what this thing is doing now all right. Uh, uh, everything that has been said is true. Uh, it, this is a sobering lesson. This is a lesson that brings us back to uh, sobriety, if you will. We have to understand that this is uh, this whole thing is is a this is a game plan. This is an agenda that is being executed. I'm talking about this overcharge. This is what we have to deal with that our parents and grandparents didn't have to deal with. Therefore, they were able to, to, to occupy their time with things that meant most. This game plan is overindulged. This game plan is to be over, overcharged. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe this week we've had, well, well right now, we I think we just ended baseball season with the, with the with the World Series. That was going on in football season is already going on. That that's going on in basketball season is is already going on. Stay so whatever your whatever your your, your like is is gonna be mm -hmm. there. We've got uh YouTube, we've got Facebook, we've got Come on. uh Twitter, we've got uh TikTok, we've got all these other all of we've got cable news, we got cable programming. If, we got TV. We got live streaming. All of this is a there's a purpose in all of this. And uh -huh. it's to, I can give you something, find out whatever it is that you like. Then we got movies, uh, and, and so on and so forth. We've got a uh, restaurant that's open 24 hours a day. All of this is a is it's an agenda that's being played out. We got to understand that this is the agenda of Satan to that's overcharge. Right. To over occupy even the saints of God, as Sister Ava was talking about, we got liberty. But as Sister Janita said, she got stepped on one of my scriptures in <laughs> Second Timothy 2 and 4, where he said, No man that warrant entangleth himself. I got freedom, but I gotta be careful that I don't entangle myself. <laughs> and, and what did it say? Entangle himself with the affairs of this life. That's what Jesus said. Of the affairs of this, not sin, the affairs of this right. life. They see them who had chosen him to be a soldier. 
This is this is something that the Lord, he warned his disciples, and take heed to yourself. He said, listen, any time your heart be overcharged, mm -hmm. you be overcharged. You get caught up in the hustle and bustle of the day. You get caught up in all the things that are going on, so much so that now you don't pray. Come on. Now you don't uh, spend time in consecration. You don't spend time mm -hmm. in meditation. All these things that the, the, that's the purpose of them is to keep us so involved that we don't do the things that we need. And notice he's talking to the saints. That's right. Because he says, as a snare, it's gonna come on over that drunk on the bird. They're not looking at it, they're not looking for it. The drunkard, the, the alcoholic drunkard, he's looking for another drink. The dope addict looking for another high. The uh, uh, the people that are drunk off uh, politics, they're looking for another uh, uh, something else to get off into. That's All right. of this is designed to keep us distracted till we just run out of time. You ever got up and got ready and knew you had to go somewhere and, 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 and you got up early enough to get started and you got distracted on this. You spent a little more time bathing. You spent a little more time trying to find something. You spent a little more time just doing your hair. You spend a little more time doing this or that. And then you look up and, man, I didn't, I'm by the lake. Why? Because you got overcharged. You got overindulged. You got distracted. And it calls you, and time yes. just keeps on ticking. But this is what the Lord, this is the term, that this is what the Lord is showing us here in this lesson. If we go to the book of Matthew, Matthew, the 20th chapter. Matthew 20 and look at verse, uh, well, let's start at verse one. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder. Uh-huh. Which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. Uh-huh. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. Uh huh. And he went out about the third, third hour and saw others standing idle in the market. I want and you said to unto the, them, Read, read, go and read, read that. Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And uh -huh. they went their way. Uh huh. Again, he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour and did likewise. And about the twelfth hour, he went out and found others standing idle and said unto them, why uh -huh. stand ye here all day idle? Hold, hold it right there. Hold it right there. Idle. We've got so much time that we have to be careful how we spend our time now. We ain't got to cook though. We ain't got to cook full course meals no more. We got too many eating places out. We got too much that we can get easy. We don't have to spend a whole lot of time even ironing clothes. You go take your clothes to the cleaner. Let them clean them. So we have to be careful as believers what we do with our idle time. That's and you good. say, you say an idle mind is the devil's workshop. You, you got time idle, your mind tends to start wavering. Your mind mm -hmm. starts to wonder. And notice he's talking here to be, these are a, a parable about believers. That's right. Are you spending the time in prayer that's necessary? See, as, as things get worse, we have to increase our time. It's been on me here lately. Daniel spent, they, Daniel spent he prayed three times a day. Now, we, we, we usually pray one time a day, but Daniel prayed three times a day. Why? That was a three-time refocusing, three-time reassessing. Three times recharge. And as things get worse, prayer is going to be our lifeline. And it is our lifetime now, lifeline now. But uh, our idle time, what are you doing with your overcharge? Notice Jesus said overcharge. Uh, that word overcharge means, uh, it mean, and he said with suffering. That means to consume too much of That's something, right. to gorge ourselves, to overfeed. And that's not just food. We can we can go out. We go we can party too much. Somebody yeah. was believers. 
Well, no, I believe we don't. Well, we don't party like the world, but we can go to dinners and we can go go here eat this and we can have this banquet and we can celebrate this person and we can have this birthday party and we can. Are you spending? You spending really? You're overcharging and overindulging in money because all that money you wasting. That's having no 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 real benefit but to celebrate somebody. Give them a birthday card. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them happy birthday. My wife just said, "What you gonna do for my kid's birthday?" She said, if if she asked me that, Reverend, I I I'm tell happy birthday. I didn't tell you what the card's gonna tell you. I can write it down if you want want to read it. Save that money. But we but overindulging. You got Valentine's Day. You got to get a Valentine's Day card. You got Christmas time. You got get a get Christmas card. Graduation time. You got to get graduate anniversary time. You got to get you wasting money. If you go to Walmart, is a good example of being overcharged. Ooh. A good example. So, right after what what was the last uh, holiday before? Uh, Halloween, and I don't count that as a holiday. That, that, that's a devil's day. But, but what was it? Memorial, was Memorial, July, day, Memorial Labor day, day, Easter, Labor Day. Labor day. After that, you saw, even before that probably came, you saw the fall decorations start coming in. And then when they, they celebrating uh, 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 Halloween, and for Halloween, as soon as Halloween is out, they start celebrating Christmas. They even jumped over Thanksgiving because mm -hmm. They they throw that in there, but they they so close together. Then as soon as before Christmas gets through, then they got New Year. After New Year, then you got late. Go go look. You watch watch it. Go look. Go look. They got after 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 New Year's Day, or even probably before New Year, they celebrate Mardi Gras. Then they celebrate Halloween. They they celebrate celebrating Valentine's Day. This is the trend of the world to keep your mind occupied. And Jesus told his disciples, don't let your heart get overcharged with, mm -hmm. uh, with, with too much of this stuff. He said, and with drunkenness. Drunkenness is a state of being intoxicated by something to the point that it impairs a person's mental or physical abilities or your judgment. So they were talking, I ain't thank the Lord, I don't think I ever been drunk, but I've seen, I've seen, I've seen, I've heard of people being drunk and out in the snow. Or, or walking like they're walking in the snow. And they, I think they found one man, he may have froze to death because he laid down in the snow to get to, mm -hmm. to go to sleep because he was drunk. Well, that's a natural drunk. But we see today that many people are drunk. And notice Jesus didn't say this to the world. He said this to his disciple. He said the world going to be caught on a, uh, on a word that for as a snare. It's going to come on all those that dwell on the earth. But we are, it's not supposed to happen to us like that. So he's warning us. Then he said, he said, and the cares of this life, which means to me and tell me that everything is not a sin. Everything is not wrong. So they were talked about it. We have liberty in Christ. But one of the fruits of the spirit is temperance. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not overdoing. Not underdoing. Keep your prayer life. Keep your consecration going. That should never take a back seat to anything. Keep your heart, as they said, with all diligence. I'm going to watch the things that I put on. I'm going to watch the things I'm going to I'm gonna, I get into. I get involved in. Mm -hmm. Because this is another way to get you overcharged. That's right. Is another way to take your mind off Christ to distract you. Let's go to Proverbs 20 and verse 13. Proverbs 20 and 13. Yeah. Love not sleep. You can, you can, you can, you can sleep too much. Yes. Come on. You can sleep too much. Sometimes I think that's why we lose, we gain too much weight. We sleeping too much. Eating, Eating. And sleeping. You know how we is. We, well, I say we. We eat and go to and sleep. Come on. Lay down on it. Yeah, you ain't getting walk around. You, you eat and lay down. I feel like laying down to sleep. I find myself. I, I got a joke on me all the time. You need to you need to sit up. Don't eat and go to sleep, though. 
She said, I don't, I don't, I don't see how you can eat and go to sleep. Well, I stopped, stopped trying to lay down some. I'm, I'm curtailing the sun, but you don't, you can't, what he said, love not sleep. When Lest say, thou come to poverty. You love to sleep. Some people love to sleep so much they can't work. Lest come thou on. come to poverty. Always late because you can't get up. Oh, Lord. I used to, when I was younger, I would always, I, I just felt like I was cheating myself if I went to bed before 12 o'clock. I Wait was young. A I felt like I was cheating myself if I didn't go to bed. If I went to bed before 12 o'clock now, I may go to bed at 8 or 9, and I'm able to get up early. I'm rarely ever late. My because, God. Because you, you can't love sleep. You got to know, hey, I, I I found it out years ago. I said, I can sleep when I can do, can't do nothing else. I can sleep when I'm dead. Over and done. Let's go to Proverbs 11 and 28. Proverbs 11 and 28. 11 and 28. And it reads, he that trusted uh -huh. in his riches shall fall. Overindulging money. Spending it and making it. Notice Jesus said in the cares of this life. He that what? He that trusted in his riches shall fall. You trusted in your riches, you're going to fall. What did it say? But the righteous shall flourish as a branch. God can bless you. God can bless you. You ain't got to be all about the mighty dollar. All about the Benjamin. First Timothy 6 and 8. First Timothy. Six and eight, and it reads, "And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content." And having food and raiment, did it say raiments? No, I know this. <laughs> you know, in biblical days, if you had two changes of garment, you were doing good. You may be considered rich. My God! Now we gotta have a a a a. a an outfit for every day of the, of the week. Well, Lord. Sometimes changing. <laughs> during, the, during the day. Woo, Jesus. Having food and raiment, let us be there with you. Now, ain't nothing wrong with it if the Lord bless you with it, but you can't get your heart into it. I ain't got nothing That's to right. wear. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Somebody ain't got nothing to wear. Woo. You can't oh. get a, another hank. Uh, another <laughs> hanger in the in the closet, and you ain't got nothing to no wear. That's over charge. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Receive the word. Receive the word on the night. Ain't no. I mean, we we gotta be thankful. Learn how to be thankful. I remember one day I was going through, and I was my sister, my wife was really going through. She was about to leave here, and I was praying and seeking the Lord, and I was on the, and the Lord spoke to me. It was like a rebuke to me because it hit me so hard. He said, you ain't thank me for what I already did. He already blessed us. He already gave us more than enough. He said, when you pray, give us this week our weekly bread. Is that what he said? No, he didn't say that. No. He said, give us, I ain't got nothing to eat. You can't, you can't get in the, in the refrigerator. You got so much you don't know. I had tacos. Come on. Come I on. had pasta. Come I on. I had hamburger. I got steak in there, but I ain't got a taste for that. Well, you, you just blessed. But you got to always understand it comes a time to set it to the side and fast. That's right. Or, or, or to seek the law. You can overindulge in eating. Come on, talk about it. Uh, 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 let's go to Luke. Luke 12 and verse 15. Luke 12 and 15. Uh-huh. And it reads, And nothing in these things are wrong. We didn't get to 1 Timothy. But let's go back to 1 Timothy uh, 6 and 8. It said, Having food and raiment, let it be there with content. What did this say? Finish reading verse, verse 9 Timothy and 10. Timothy 6 and 9 and 10. Yeah. It says, uh, and having food and raiment, let us be there with content. 
but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare. They that will be rich is never enough. This catches a lot of our churches. We got money in the bank. We got enough to take care of our need, but it's never enough. We still come on, give. Come on, give. Why don't you have an appreciation service? I did this when I was pastoring. I had an appreciation service for the members. Come on, give back. That's that that Sunday morning. I came in with with, with envelopes for the members. We're gonna oh. You don't see that. They always that. intaking in. Give some back. Don't let the rust corrupt it. Don't let the moths come in and 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 corrupt it. Give some back. I have a I have a friend there in in Dallas, Elder Lowe. He told me he had a appreciation service for his for his members. Set up the table before them. Let them be blessed. Show them appreciation. You're not showing me appreciation by preaching the word of God to me. You're supposed to do that. You've been commanded to do that. Go the extra mile. Instead of you, them good. giving you a steak dinner, you give them one. That's good. Nah, you got to live by faith. Now, that's just greedy. Ooh, that's all, that's, that's all good. that is. Greedy. And what did it say? And having food and raiment, let us be done with content for they that will be rich. That's why many of our preachers fall. You don't have to have a Mercedes. Come on. You don't have to have that long Maserati. That's money wasted. Get a Pinto, it'll take you the same place and cost you less. Having food and raiment, let it be there with content for they that will be rich. He said, fall into temptation. And a, and a snap, snare. you start thinking you deserve all of that. You got Come five on. cars. You can only drive one at a time. You got to have a Jeep. You got to have a Mercedes. You got to have a Rolls Royce. How many cars you need? Come on. Over Charles. What did he say? And into many foolish and hurtful lust. For the love of money. Is the root of all evil. Let's, let's, let's move on. Let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke 12 and verse 15. Finish reading these scriptures. I don't have time to get to all of them. Luke 12 and 15. That's and, and part of and, and members, we're partly to blame. Yeah. I had a preacher touch said to me one day, What am I worth to you? Well, you ain't nothing but another man. Be honest about it. I, I ain't tell them that because I wasn't where I am now. But hey, what are you worth to me? You, you, you piece of dirt just like I am. You yeah. preaching to me. That's the God. God is you doing that. You doing that as service. If you can't be saved if you don't preach the gospel. And the gospel is without charge. Thank God I'm that you're telling much. the truth. But you're supposed to do that. You go to hell yourself if you don't. That's right. We remember the some sometimes part to blame. My pastor got to have a bit. I never heard the disciples saying that about Jesus. Come on. He had to have a bit. He really did deserve a bit. But he walked everywhere he went. He ate in homes. He he had he slept, no doubt, by the by the, on the street. And you can't be greater than our our Lord. You can't be greater That's than right. our master. That's right. All right, let's go to Luke. Let's go to Luke. See, Luke 12 so and 15. Blessed. We've been so blessed, especially here in America. We've been so blessed, boy, when, when trouble really hit, it's going to rock our world. We're going to be in trouble. We're going to be really in trouble. You ain't going to be able to go to that refrigerator and, and, and decide what you want to eat. It's going to be decided. Whatever the, whatever they giving out down the road, that's going to be what you're going to eat. And you know what? Hunger is the best seasoning. Come on, read. <laughs> Luke 12, Luke 12. And verse 15. And he said unto them, uh huh. Take heed. Go to go up. Go up a verse before that. Luke twelve and fourteen. And he said unto them, "Man, who made me a judge or a divider over go up, you?" Go up a verse, a verse higher than that. I'm trying to get, trying to get. One came to him, saying, "Master, speak to my brother." In verse thirteen, Luke twelve and thirteen, and one of the company said unto him, uh -huh. "Master, speak to my brother." 
that he divide the inheritance with me. Uh huh. And he said unto him, man, and this in red, this Jesus speaking, who made me judge or divide over you? Jesus, what he's saying, man, I ain't got nothing to do with none of that. That's earthly stuff. And he said unto them, Oh, hold it. Jesus said, uh, that, that ain't, ain't got nothing to do with, that ain't got nothing to do with ministry. See, we, we done jumped off there because we think money is all about preaching, all about ministry. What the preacher said, uh, money heal me. Come on. Well, I heard it myself. Money. I, I got to have money. You done lost sight of, of what ministry really is. That's right. What did it say? And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness. Uh-huh. For a man's take life. Take heed, to... Jesus said, and be. And beware of covetousness. And beware of covetousness means desiring what belongs to somebody else. But covetous also means uh, being greedy. And that's what he's talking about here. Take heed and beware of greed, overindulgence, overcharge. What did he say? For a man's life consists For a man's life. Not in the abundance of uh -huh. things which he possesses. A man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things he possessed. Read. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, uh -huh. the, the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. Read. And he thought within himself, uh -huh. saying, What shall I do? Read. Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And you he got said, enough, What you gonna do with it? Come on. You got enough. What you gonna get some over the way? Oh, I'm saving it for a rainy day. I I'm say I can't worry, but I'm gonna save it for when I do, when I get down to where I can worry. Come on. So why don't you just give it away? Maybe God will bless you with something when you need something down later on. Amen. Amen. No, I spent too much money for this. Read, come on, read. Come on, it's the truth. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my uh -huh. barns and build greater. And there will I bestow and this, all now, my fruits and my goods. The flip side of this is that and the flip side of this is that we can't be prodigal either. We're not to be greedy, but we're also not to be wasteful. Don't be greedy, but don't be wasteful either. One of my children called me one day, Daddy, what do you do about this and that? I said, so, I said, remember this, waste not, want not. If you don't waste money, you may have it when you need it. You got an extra $100 bill, bill, don't spend it. Don't go splurge it, save it. Later on, you may need it. Or if you're going to splurge, use 20. You ain't gotta, sometimes we bless ourselves too much. Come on. You got to know how to hold on to some money. You may need it later on. Maybe the Lord gave it to you this month because he knows you're not going to have it next month. And sometimes we have to be cautious of that because sometimes God meets needs ahead of time. You don't know why you got that extra $100 bill. That's because he knows later on you're going to hit a dry spot. But if you give it away, sometimes the Lord, I, I did that myself. I know that because of experience. Lord, I went to Dallas and preached in a man's church. And he blessed me with a good offer. I didn't ask for it either. And I was just so caught up and so so just caught up in love. I, I didn't even look at the offer. I gave it back to him. Here, just here, take it back. Oh, I went through for the next six months. Because <laughs> God <laughs> met my need, but I gave it back. God meant for that to That's be good. for me. But I gave it back. So you got a temper. Being wasteful with overindulgence. Sometimes the Lord gives you something, you hold on to it because He knows you're gonna need it later on. How many times we done done that? Lord bless you something. Yeah. We all oh, you gotta learn to hold on to something. Read, what did it say? I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. Uh-huh. And I will say to my soul. So, Lord, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine eat. You, eat, drink, and be merry. My pastor preached a message years ago, many times. 
Will kill body, but a neglected soul. That's overindulgent. You taking care of this body, you getting the rest. Some people don't go. Now, ain't nothing wrong with going to church on Sunday. I'm not religious, but if you, but you, but but you ain't even going to church none. You ain't seeking the Lord none. Yeah. You ain't spending no time alone with the Lord none. <clears throat> and then it was like so they were saying something that religious. It helped us because it kept us with some kind of structure. Mm -hmm. It wasn't required of the Lord, but it kept us with some kind of structure. And some of us, that's what we need, especially when you're young. You need a lot of structure. But if you're, if you're wise and grow in Christ, you can structure yourself. You can, you, can, right. you, can, you can control your own self. So you got much good laid up for many years. Take down, eat, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said what? Thou God food, said, thou this soul. Night, thy soul shall be required of thee. You took care of the body, but you didn't take care of the soul. We'll spend two or three hours looking at a football game and won't. And if the preacher preach past 30 minutes, oh, he too preach too long. Then we'll lead her and go home and look at a football or basketball game for the next three or four hours. Or a movie for two hours. That's not mm -hmm. counting the commercial. We overindulge it in the things that don't mean as much. When it's all said and done, it's all about our soul. That's right. That's why Jesus said, take heed. Listen, anytime, what he said? For as, what did he say? Take heed therefore to yourself, Luke 21, 34, listen, every time your heart be overcharged with surfeiting, with drunkenness, and the cares of this life so come upon you on a war. He's as a snare shall it come on all them that go faith of the heartful and pray always that you, watch this, may be accounted worthy. I want the Lord to account me worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. We got to make sure that the Lord accounts us worthy. I'm not laboring for the praise of me. I'm laboring for the praise of the Lord. God bless you. I'm through. Amen. Amen. Being not overcharged and overindulged on tonight. Amen. Yes, we have liberty in Christ, but don't get so blinded that you lose sight of Christ. Mm -hmm. We lose sight of Christ and then it's our soul that suffers and we end up uh, missing the mark, right? Amen. Don't be overcharged and overindulged on tonight. Friday night live, every Friday night, join us at 7 p.m. If the word finds you, say ouch. And, and I mean, I'm I've been cut. I'm trying to get some stitches or something tonight. <laughs> but I thank God for the word. That's what it comes for. And it's out of love. The correction is love. The reproof is love. The rebuke is love. He chastens who? Them that he loves. The, the object is to take the word and not apply it to your life. The areas you need to correct, go correct them. That's what the word comes forth for. Go correct it. Right. Amen. Thank y'all for tuning in. I truly enjoyed this lesson. I knew it was for me, but when Pastor Moore started speaking, I really knew. I said, Lord, I knew it was for me, but golly, it was for me. <laughs> Talk about having too much and I ain't ever got nothing to wear. Every day I make a video in the morning and say, well, you know, per usual, I'm late to work because I don't be wanting to get out that bed. Right. Once I get up, I'm good. <laughs> but getting out the bed is a you know, now nah, I, I got to work on that. Girl, you got to get up. Then I just, you know, um, a small testimony that when I first came to Christ, I noticed how everything in my life changed. I've never been a morning person. I ain't never wanted to get up in the morning. But when I got saved and the Lord came in and filled me, I was up, ready before my alarm went off. I don't know. I just was ready. You go to work, I'm on time. So much so the people at work was like, yeah, something happened because she on time. 
And then over, over time, come on, talk about being overcharged and over and done. John and got back to, well, I don't want to really get out the bed in the morning. When I get there, I'm good. But that getting out the bed part, you know, I got cut on tonight. You can't love sleep. You got to get up and make it happen, right? I enjoyed the word. I hope something was said on tonight that blessed you, that opened your eyes, that removed the must from your ears, because we know the word of the Lord will not go out and return unto him void. Um, sister, um, well, Bishop, I guess you can go ahead and pray us out on tonight. Father, we thank you for blessing us. Okay. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us, oh God, to assemble one more time. We thank you, oh God, for this time. We pray that your word take good in their heart. Oh, God, to bring forth fruit, oh, God, unto eternal life. In Jesus' name, we pray and we thank you for it right now. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Join us on next Friday night for Friday Night Live. Amen. God amen. bless. <coughs>